Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. Age the Elephant, part of Bonnaroo, which will have tickets in Clash with Kenzie. We'll get you on the phones in about seven minutes, so stay right here. And a very historic day here with Brian and Kenzie on Q101 is doing both stories from head to headlines. We've never done that before. But well, it just kind of makes you a liar. Well, no. I mean, it, it, <laughs> it's the first time ever, ever, and it was an exact tie with the texting. It still was a tie even afterward, 1,100 texts with a 3% plus or minus voting ratio problem there. But we have to So be, it's about tied. It's about tied. <laughs> about a, a one or two texts off. That's all it is. It's really, I've never seen anything like it before. Yes. So Okay, what's the second one? So here is headline number two. Quote, I just divorced my wife, end quote. Man charged with firing celebratory shots in downtown Nashville. (laughs) (laughs) So here we go with headline number two right now. And Nashville, Tennessee. A man is facing more than a dozen charges after he's accused of randomly firing several shots in the streets of downtown Nashville and assaulting officers. Oh, that's unfortunate. So that means... That should have been in the headline. Well... That's why we go. That's why we do this to see a little more of the story. <laughs> <laughs> According to the arrest report, officers with the Metro Nashville Police Department responded to shots fired about 6 a.m. 6 a.m. Paperwork went through early. Yeah, but I mean, he must have been first in line. <laughs> That's a good point. Are divorce, I almost said divorce clinics, but they don't have clinics. But are divorce lawyers working around the clock? Can you get like an early bird special? Hmm. I think it depends how much you spend. I think you can get anything you want from a lawyer depending on how much you pay him. Amen. Well, well, we, have, we haven't gone further in the story. Do you think it was the night before, the day before, and he partied all night? And then oh. at 6 a.m. he went off the rails? That makes more sense. Why? So was he ending his night with celebratory shots? Possibly. Yeah, you don't start your day with celebratory <laughs> shots. You end no. your night with them. It's almost like fireworks, but he couldn't afford them. <laughs> yeah. uh, like he got a, you know, he went to Starbucks, got his grande latte, whatever, and and shot off a gun. And then he finally said, "I'm going to end before I go home of this 12 day spree of celebrating my divorce <laughs> with a few shots in the air. Why not?" Okay, so according to the arrest report, uh, they responded to the shots at 6 a.m. downtown Nashville. Uh, upon arrival, police located 26 year old Craig Jose Miller also known as Juan Jose Vasquez. So, I'm not sure on the alias. Wait, what were his names again? So it's Craig Jose Miller, but he's also known as Juan Jose Vasquez. Boy, okay, Craig. so he's got his he's got his white name. Yeah, Craig is for American. <laughs> that's pretty that's pretty standard. <laughs> is it Kinsey? Yeah, I know a lot of people. Okay, uh, that's with a lot of cultures. You, typically you have your name that everyone can just pronounce. So his birth name, I'm sure, is the second one. Right. But I, you I know, mean, but I mean, so Juan, Juan or you Craig. You mean what? Juan or Craig. I mean, I can say both. <laughs> well, that's because you're so cultural, Brian. Uh, I know. Uh, I, I wonder how Craig came into play. Yeah. Why would you pick Craig if you're going to pick a white guy name? Yeah. There's so many better ones. No uh, disrespect to Craig's. I'm sure there's nice Craig's out of there. Of course. Craig yeah. Council. <laughs> oh, good one. <laughs> Thank you. Nailed it. Now, what's his alias? Juan Council? <laughs> um, He's number Juan. Yeah. <laughs> Police right now. Um, so another individual was sitting at the corner of the intersection. When they asked if uh, they had shot the gun or heard gunshots, they said, no, it was not us. So they kept looking. A delivery driver then spoke to officers and told them he heard a series of gunshots and observed Miller waving a firearm around and shooting off two rounds in different directions. Mm. Arriba! (laughs) (laughs) I mean, that's a celebration. Uh, The arrest report states that officers found the firearm in the parking lot next to the intersection. So he threw the gun, you know, before they got over there. Also, we gave it away after. He's a nice guy. Uh, Clearly, just in a very giving mood after his divorce. Um, They finally caught up with him, and when they found him, Miller responded that he had a gun, but it was not with him. And he was taken into custody for reckless endangerment. Then later, in questioning, he said, okay, it was me. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you got me. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how hard that questioning was, but it doesn't say how long. Well, they... he didn't lie. He said, I have a gun. It's not with me. And yeah. he left the gun somewhere else. He so, was... I mean, where's the lie? Very truth. Um, he, he... Said, <laughs> he, admi- he admitted that he divorced. He just divorced his wife and fired off eight rounds as a celebration. So, he's even telling the officers they only knew about two rounds. Yeah, he should have. Should have stopped talking. Yeah, he really wanted to talk about it. Here's what here's how he worded it though. I fired off eight rounds as a celebration for regaining his freedom. Good for him. Well, I just lost it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Takes care of that. Um, Welcome no, back. 
according to the Nashville PD, they also found a THC pen in his pocket. And he had exhibited extremely slurred speech and was, quote, unable to take care for himself. Does that mean he peed himself? That's what I'm wondering. Is that code? Take care. I think it just means, like, maybe they're probably helping him walk to the interrogation. Yeah. I, I thought pee first, too, yeah, no, for some reason. Why? <laughs> Why would it be pee first? Because that's, you take care of business. Yeah. He can't take care of business. But take care of himself. Yeah. I think he peed himself. I think he peed his pants and then shot his gun. I think, I think you're right. There's no, what a fun night. <laughs> there's no full body. Honestly, I don't know. Case, have you ever gone to Nashville? No, I don't okay, think Bri- I can handle it. Brian has. Yes. I feel like I've seen this exact scenario on Broadway. Like, I don't know. It, it wasn't pretty normal. It wasn't far from Broadway. And yeah, it's a, it's a wild scene. It's that, That's why they call it Nash Vegas. Um, and, I, and I certainly have seen some people that were, you know, peeing in alleys. And not shooting a gun. I well, never, kind of I never smells that. like pee it there does. in general. It, it, people that live there don't love it, but we love going there because it's fun. You know, we go in there, we wreck the town, and then we leave. It's a good time. Fire <laughs> off eight rounds and celebrate. Uh, two, during the arrest, two or more victims, and we didn't shoot anybody, just shot in the air, but they approached the officers and said, yeah, that's the guy. <laughs> That's the guy that was shooting off his gun. And- they didn't even get shot, but they're victims. Come on. Everyone's well, a victim. I mean, a, <laughs> I mean, a bullet went by their head. I mean, to be fair. Yeah. It did. It went by their... They saw it. They saw it. They saw it go by their head. That's right. I don't believe it. Well, we can get deeper in the story and see if they actually say that. Um, authorities reported stolen property from the vehicle break-in that occurred earlier that night that was found in his backpack. So he actually went on a little bit of a stealing oh, okay. spree, well, too. Okay, well, that's not good. He, he, he did a now little I'm more. disappointed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Up until now, you were on his side. Yeah. I was. I was really trying to defend him for having one fun night, but that's not good. You don't take everybody else's stuff, too. <laughs> well, he was booked in the Metro jail just after 1 o'clock and uh, faces more than a dozen charges. And A dozen? Oh, my God. Well, they can, you can add up there. Uh, first off, we had the stealing, the gun, the shooting of the gun. Eight rounds. Uh, yeah. Not charge per round. I mean, it is Tennessee, and down there. I, I mean, maybe getting rid of evidence because he threw the gun. Possibly peeing his pants. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if that's a crime, lock me up. Right. The Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. You can't defeat her. She's too powerful. With Kenzie. <laughs> Let the battle begin. Q101. Let's go. Bonnaroo tickets and a camping pass for Bonnaroo. Four days in Manchester, Tennessee with the Chili Peppers, Cage the Elephant, Interpool, Taking Back Sunday, and more. Coming up in June, you will be there. And taking on Kenzie today in trivia is Hulu Ali from Palatine. Ahoy, Ali, tell us something about yourself. Hey, ahoy, guys. Um, well, today's my birthday. Oh. Really Ooh, happy birthday! Thank you. I'm really excited. I've never been to Bonnaroo, so I'm really hoping I win. Um, mm. Yeah, and especially with the weather not being so great, it would be a great perk. <laughs> All right. Well, Ooh. listen, this would be great. Everything sounds great there. Just focus. I hope you're ready for trivia with Kenzie. Here we go. Uh, first one to five wins. Listen carefully. If Kenzie gets one wrong, you can steal a point. She can do the same with you. Call heads or tails in the count of three. One, two, three, call it. Heads. It is heads. Good birthday so Woo! far. There you go. That's you probably should have just deferred to her because it was her birthday, but it's fine. She, yeah, won anyways. she won the coin toss. <laughs> one more coin toss won by a birthday person. Uh, okay, Allie, here we go. Question number one. It's an old one, but a good one. What was the name of the Snapple lady? Oh, uh, slow. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. Uh, not Flo. You remember those commercials were everywhere with the Snapple lady back in the day. It's a little bit old to go back to that. Do you remember that, Kenzie, or do you know that? I believe it's Wendy. It was Wendy. Ooh, okay. I, I, I used to love Snapple. I didn't know if that was playing tricks on me because I also love Wendy's. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tempt me with a Baconator. No, well, absolutely not. One to nothing, and it's back to Kenzie. Kenzie, which president took up jogging the curb rumors that his obsession with McDonald's fries was leading to his poor health? I got to be honest. Well, first off, Bill Clinton. It is Bill and Clinton. You you got to think he should have been worried, like more worried about other rumors that he wasn't proactive about. Like well, that's the one he decided to address. Man, no, who cares about that dress yeah. that's out there? We can't have an unfit president. Yeah. yeah. No, absolutely not. He also wore those really 
really revealing jogging shorts. <laughs> Those balls wanted to escape. You know, they're called. The brand, the brand was. I don't know if you know much about him, but his balls did escape many times. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, fair, fair point. Mm-hmm. <laughs> easy with those shorts. Oh, no kidding. Very easy. Uh, well, I mean, you know, of course Monica wanted them. He was wearing those shorts. <laughs> All right, Allie needs a point here. Two to nothing. It's back to her. Allie, in track and field races with team members, what do they pass between one each other? A baton. Baton is right. Uh, back to Kenzie. Mm-hmm. Uh, what name did the characters in The Hangover give to the baby they found during the movie? Carlos. Carlos was right. Good job. Kinsey's wheelhouse. <laughs> well, I've really, really been looking into should that be my Halloween costume this year with my baby? It should. Yes, oh. it should. So that's one of the that's why it's been fresh on my mind. <laughs> thinking a lot about the hangover lately. Yeah, so really done a deep dive. There you go. Three to one back to Allie. Allie, what band performed the song Wanted, Dead or Alive and released in 1986? Oh, uh. Name a band. Bon Jovi? It's Bon Jovi. Bon Jovi. Good job. Deadliest Catch theme song. <laughs> and why they pick, I, I get it, the Dead or Alive and Deadliest Catch on the Water, but it just seemed like a, a, an interesting song to pick for a theme really song. Is it really the theme song? Yeah, yeah, it's badass. That's why they picked it. it really no is. wonder that's a trivia question. Case puts the other the trivia questions, and he loves that show. Right. I, was, I was like, I can't believe there's a Bon Jovi question you know, when, like, when I heard him ask it. It's also a great edit they do. Like yeah. it, it makes the song even better because no, it's a awesome. shorter version. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. All right, three to two. Mm-hmm. Back to Kenzie. Kenzie, who played Aunt Becky in the show Full House? Oh, um, Lori Laughlin. Lori Laughlin's right. Went to, she went Her to gym. last name is like saying Worcestershire sauce. I struggle with it so much. Uh, we'll say it again. Laughlin. I say it really fast. Yeah, you're fine. Just say it really fast. Laughlin. <laughs> I hate it. So it's 4 2. It's 4 2. I got bad news for Allie. She's down. She needs a point here. Uh, Allie, what Ooh. car manufacturer manufactures the Prius? Oh. Question. Guess a car uh, company really quick. Three. Uh, Kia. Kia. Kia does not make the Prius. No. no. Oh, Kenzie for the win. Toyota. Toyota is the winner. Oh. Well, stop it. It's Allie's birthday. She's obviously going to go. <laughs> Are you giving her the tickets, Kenzie? Well, duh. Oh. Have you met me? It's her mm. birthday. She always gives them away. <laughs> there you go. Oh, my God. Congratulations. I'm so excited. You're going anyway. Thank you so much, you guys. I appreciate this. You guys just made my day. Thank you so much. Happy birthday. (laughs) Clash with Kenzie. The Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. All right. Well, we'll do it again tomorrow at this time. Be here around 810 if you want to get those Bonnaroo tickets and compete in Clash with Kenzie. Brian and Kenzie in the morning. And Chicago's alternative all day. Q. 101. Brian and Kenzie on Q101. And remember, coming up at 9, about a half hour away, is your chance to go see the Chili Peppers. Now we give away Bonnaroo tickets. Now the Chili Peppers, anywhere in the U.S. You want to go see them, you pick it. And it's a great trip, VIP style. Uh, and that's coming up at 9 o'clock here with Brian and Kenzie on Q101. But let's get to a piece of garbage madness in full swing. People and things that have been pieces of garbage in the last year. We're in the second round. Almost half of the second round is done. And you vote on this. People have asked, how can I vote for Tiffany Henyard? I've seen your texts. Well, each round you vote on our Facebook page, on Twitter, and on the Instagram story. And then they kind of add them all up. We got to, you know, put them all together. It's interesting how different platforms have different results. For example, yesterday, White Sox against the words bruh and sus. Now, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing how many people want to defend the White Sox saying, well, I don't blame the players. I blame the organization. Well, it is the White Sox still all encompassed there. So, but on Twitter, the White we Sox. We blame the first base coach. <laughs> yeah, the first base coach not getting out there. But the White Sox won huge. But on uh, on Twitter, and there was it was even on Facebook, there was a lot of people defending bra, or defending them and going with bra and sus. And then on Instagram stories, bra and sus took a little bit of uh, an advantage. Yeah, they cleaned up there. They did. But- it reminds me of the presidential campaign where sometimes it's not that both aren't bad. It's just which one do you hate more? Exactly. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you have to take a side. You have to just yeah. finally pick. And I get some of them are tough. Now, the White Sox eventually advanced once we added them all up. The Bears also advanced in the, in this re- in the region against the people, oh that filled, the people that filled in the rat hole. Mm-hmm. I thought that was going to win. But the Bears upset them. They were a one seed. So the one seed in that region is gone. Wow. How about that? It's like Houston losing to Duke. <laughs> just like that. But they just went up recently here in the last hour. 
is today's matchup, at least the first matchup of the day. It is number four seed, Netflix, for banning account sharing in the last year. Oh, well, that, was a big, that, was, that was a big uh. Yeah, Casey, how has this affected you? Please oh tell your God. truth. We had to get an account. It sucked. <laughs> well, and I wanted to like, I wanted to stand like 10 toes down on this. I'm like, F Netflix. I'm not getting it. And then my son's like, hey, all my favorite shows are on there. I'm like, crap. <laughs> there goes that. Well, wait, what is he watching on Netflix? What, like House of Cards? No, <laughs> there, there's a lot of kids stuff on Netflix. Oh, yeah. I didn't know like, that. That's the is pro- it cake? Is it Those cake? Big, is it cake is on Netflix. That's a show? Yeah, where people bake stuff and you can't tell if it's cake or the actual object. Oh, I've seen those videos. Yeah, so uh, he's a big fan of is it cake. He's that's a big a, fan wait, of Wait, hold on. That's a whole show? Yeah. It's actually pretty good. I said the same <laughs> I said the same thing and then got pretty wrapped up in well that's obviously cake. I mean I got I got sucked in pretty pretty bad on on deciding which one was cake and which wasn't. <laughs> I gotta admit, that doesn't seem like a show. It does seem... It seems like a clip. Well, when you watch the Instagram a videos... A if you will. Yeah. I mean, it looks like this shoe. And then all of a sudden, you see the knife come in and cut it, and I go, oh, damn, it's cake. Aren't they but, all cake? <laughs> so in the, so in, the, in the show, it's very good. In the show, their, their piece of cake goes up against an object, and if the judges can't tell, like they have to actually guess... How many people? So the are, cake is next to the object. How many people are on the panel? Like choosing, is it two or three people? And how do we get on no, the panel? they they always have a guest uh, judge, which I'm always not a fan of. I think we should have a professional in there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we take it serious enough sometimes. Who, who are the guest judges? Is it kind of at a level where you think we could get? It's on a the B show? level. Often other Netflix, like maybe somebody from oh. House of Cards. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> With Kevin Spacey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like th- things like that. So I'll- is it cake's a big one? Um, also nailed it. Have you guys watched that cooking slash baking? Oh, that's, show? that's with Nicole Byer, right? Yes, and that's the one where they bring on people who like to cook and bake but aren't professionals, and it's like they have to, have to try to replicate like the professional one. It's like the college basketball of cooking shows. They're not pros. Mm. No. And a lot of them aren't going to go pro. They're not going to be professional chefs, but they like doing it. But yeah, and like they, it's like they kind of like. Well, I would say college is beyond just like doing it. You have to be pretty good to be maybe high school. <laughs> This, is, high this is really bad because you're adding to my queue right now with these shows. Mm. Like, now I want to see the. I don't. I never thought in the Whatever. world. Whatever. You never watch anything I tell you to watch. <laughs> I know. That's I'm the not problem. About it. You're, like, you're adding in now. I'm actually going to put in. Is it cake? Which I never thought I would do as something I need to watch. But what now do you I think? Gonna... When my son wanted to watch it, I'm like, oh god. And like 15 minutes later, I'm like, there's no way it's cake. <laughs> I, I, mean, exactly. I mean, it went it went off the rails fast. For I was like shushing him, like, hey, hey, we haven't heard the result. Be quiet. <laughs> I got to tell you, Kenzie, right, over the part. right now on the text line, so many people watch that show. Is I it know. Cake? It's like, <laughs> and it's so annoying, but like you have, like you got to see it. This is the problem with that feature. And all of our listeners, when we talked about this last year, said, well, screw Netflix. I'm go- I did. I'm, I- I'm going to go away. And everybody, their subscriptions skyrocketed when they started banning sharing the accounts. And well, I- how am I supposed to know if it was cake or not? <laughs> That's right. How could you survive? <laughs> Not knowing if this shoe was Damn cake. it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really thought when Netflix did that that their subscriptions would plummet. Because I, I don't have a Netflix account now. I, I'm, you know, the rare rare person that was like, you know what, I don't need this. Because I don't have a kid that needs to know if it's cake or not. I was wrong. I was very wrong about this. People really need their Netflix. I remember everybody fighting that. I'm not going to get it. Yeah. I go, you're going to get it. You're going to cave in and get it. How can you not have Netflix? Oh, well, I'm, not, I'm not happy about it, though. Yeah. I, well, still, I stand by F Netflix. I just have an account. It's at the bottom of my subscription chart, though. I need HBO. I like Hulu. I have. What do you need on HBO? Larry Sanders show reruns, Curb, Sopranos, The Wire. Have you watched East Bounded Down yet? I've seen the first season. I'm quite a fan. I like it. You should watch the rest of it. Okay. By the way, I'm on season four, which is a miracle. I can't believe there's four seasons of the show. (laughs) Yeah, but everything you said is reruns. Not Curb. Curb oh, Cur- new. Curb new, but the other three, Sopranos, The Wire, and... And Larry Sanders. And Larry show. Sanders is like 40 years old. It's a great show. <laughs> it was like 40 years old. It's a huge I've never even heard story. of that show. It's a great show, Kenzie, I gotta admit. It's it, really, really good. It's is one of my cake biggest in influences. It? There's not cake in the Larry Sanders no. show. Lame. It's like The <laughs> Office, but set in a late night talk show. Wait, so is it is it scripted? Yes, it is. Oh. 
but it's like The Office. If you love The Office. Oh, but their office, like their work is a late night talk show. Is that yes. what you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you meant like office humor meets late night talk show. <laughs> I was like, I don't get it. No. The Office. If I you, see. If you love The Office, you would love I the see. Larry Sanders show. It might come off a little dated, in some, but really it's still super funny. No, it's hilarious. All right. So, so who's huh. Netflix up against? So Netflix banning account sharing was or is a number four seed going against the people that took out Gen Xers, a five seed. The it's not pizza crowd for the people that say deep dish pizza is not pizza. And that took out Gen X and that's going against Netflix right now. That annoys me. I I think that annoys me more than anybody else because I just hate people that say deep dish pizza is not pizza. And I'm not trying to say it's the best or whatever. I do love Pequod's. I love Nancy's pizza. I love Gino's East. And these people, they're mostly online out of towners, but it, it pollutes my timeline. Every time you post something, it's not pizza, it's a casserole. Um, I have a question for you, Brian, related to this. Yes. Kinsey, you've been gone for a while. I don't think you heard Brian tell the story, and Brian hasn't told it on the air. Mm. You almost got into a, a fight at Pequod's Pizza like two weeks ago. Mm. Can you? Do we have time to tell the story? <laughs> He's like, Kinsey, you've seen Brian worked up before. It's it's a lot. I've never seen him worked up like this. And it was about deep dish, but I don't even know what specifically. You know what's interesting is that, remember that one time he was really worked up because somebody said something to Megan at the airport? Oh my the God. fact that he was more mad about the deep dish thing <laughs> is very interesting. I would say I was equal in wanting to choke somebody out. <laughs> Lies. <laughs> I, I almost killed that guy at the airport. But I mean, not physically. In my head, I was killing him. Yeah, but what happened at Pequod's? I think you did this to somebody else. It wasn't Pequod's. I was actually at a delightful place, Robert's Pizza, my other favorite pizza place in town. A girl from, It was on St. Patty's Day weekend. We were all drinking. She was from New Jersey. <laughs> And started slamming Chicago pizza. Uh-huh. And I felt it was my duty at this time. I don't have the national anthem ready to go. But it was my duty to defend. And I, I was having a great time. I was having an awesome time. Well, St. Patrick's Day weekend, you're a little buzzed. I became... So you were at the restaurant? Was she talking to you or did you just interrupt her? <laughs> she was talking to a couple people and me was one of them. But no one else was... Everyone was else letting it slide. Did you know her? No, I just met her. She, okay. was, she was part of a group of people that we met. Okay. And Megan was next to me, my wife, and a couple other friends, and no one else was standing up for it. It was kind of going along with it. I'm saying, and I just took a stand and went, Kenzie, I went nuts. It was. (laughs) What did she say? What did she say that set you off? She said, East Coast pizza is better than Midwest pizza, and Chicago pizza doesn't even come close. And so, what did you do? Oh. I punched her in the face. No, I did not. <laughs> he no, her throw a window. Nothing violent, but I got so loud the entire restaurant was looking at me. I go, "Are you kidding me? There's, there's no flavor in that pizza." On the East. And uh, by the way, I love a lot of East Coast pizza. I lived in Philadelphia when I got exiled from Chicago for a few years. I don't mind it. I like it, but I just went on this insane rant to take the one side so hard. I looked. I was frothing at the mouth because I was drunk. And I was also <laughs> defending Chicago because no one else was. And Where I was said, Harper? Harper was home with a babysitter. Oh, she thank was not, God. She, was not, not, she didn't see Daddy lose his freaking mind and almost get tased and pepper sprayed for an that argument bo- <laughs> that meant You not, didn't even know her. I didn't know her. And I, I can only imagine what she thinks of me today. Probably not a right. lot. I don't care. I right. hope you told her that you work for a different radio station. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, listen listen to the Christmas music on Light FM. I'm over there every year doing that, yeah. Brian and Kenzie in the morning. And Chicago's alternative all day. Q101.